Good morning. Welcome to my channel, English Literature. Today we will read about English and Scottish Chaucerians. Chaucer's age did not end with the death of Chaucer. His influence was more powerful than he himself. That's why we find a group of writers who, being influenced by Chaucer, wrote several books in the next century after Chaucer's death, 1400 to 1500. They imitated and followed his style in their writing. They are known as Chaucerians. Given Douglas, a Scottish bishop and poet had divided them into two parts, English and Scottish Chaucerians. Their works comprise hardly any originality because what they did, they imitated and followed Chaucer. Actually, they kept Chaucer alive even after Chaucer's death. Among the English Chaucerians, the major ones are John Lydgate. He was a most well-known follower of Chaucer who produced a lot of works in the imitation of Chaucer. He acknowledged Chaucer as a follower, flower of poets. His most remarkable works we study, they are the story of thieves based on Canterbury Tales. So you can uh, look that, have a look at how they just imitate and follow Chaucer's work. The Troy book followed Chaucer's Troilus and Cressida. You have to keep in mind that which book John, John Lydgate's which book followed Chaucer's Troilus and Cressida, that is the Troy book. Fall of Princess, based on Chaucer's Monk's Tale and Boccaccio's De Cassibus Virorum Illustrio. These two are the sources of Lydgate's Fall of Princess. Next, the Temple of Glass, we have already read that it is from Chaucer's The House of Fame. The complaint of the Black Knight is also modeled on Chaucer's The Book of the Duchess, where we find the knight who was lamenting of his mistress's death. Next is Thomas Ockliffe. He was a friend of Chaucer. His best known work is The Regiment of Price. Next, John Skelton, 1460 to 1529. John Skelton is known for his satires and morality plays. His important works as Colin Cloud. It is very important, Colin Cloud. And the other ones are Why Come You Not to Court, Speak Parrot, The Book of Philip Sparrow. In these books, he satirizes the clergy. Edmund Spencer took this character, Colin Cloud, in Shepherd's Calendar and the Fairy Queen. So, Spencer's character, the Colin Cloud, was in his two works, the Shepherd's Calendar and the Fairy Queen. But these two, in his two work, the character he followed, that is Colin Cloud, is taken from John Skelton's Colin Cloud. In Spencer's writing, Colin Cloud was Spencer himself. It is also an important point to note down that Colin Cloud is Spencer himself, who is modeled on Skelton's Colin Cloud. Stephen Hawes, he is the disciple of Lydgate. He devoted, developed allegorical romances. George Ashley, Henry Bradshaw, George Ripley, Thomas Norton, Alexander Buckley, these are the other persons on English Chaucerian. George Berkeley introduced eclogues into English literature. You must keep this point in mind that he introduced eclogues in, into English literature. His major work is The Sheep of Fools that contains five eclogues. Let us find that th these are followed, this style is followed by many of the Elizabethan poets. Now come to Scottish Chaucerians. Scottish Chaucerians used Chaucer's verse and stanza form and heighten them to a lofty position more than the English Chaucerian. So in comparison with the Scottish Chaucerian and English Chaucerian, Scottish Chaucerians are far more ahead. And in this respect, they are far more ahead of English Chaucerian. They are not only imitated Chaucer, but also imbued 
their spirit, imbued his spirit in the writing. So they not only uh, imitate Chaucer, but also imbued Chaucer's spirit in their writing. And without spirit, everything is just like a dry leaf. Among Scottish Chaucerians, the most famous ones are King James the first. Most famous Scottish Chaucerian, his remarkable work is the King's Poem, King's Book. It is a dream allegory inspired by Knight's Tale. It is written in rhyme roll of Chaucerian stanza. We have already told about Chaucerian stanza. And it expresses his love for John Garber, John Beaufort, niece of Henry the Sixth. So, um, James is the King's Square. It is a love story that expresses his love for John Beaufort, niece of Henry the Fourth. It is very important to note that Chaucer's fame in Scotland was spread by King James the First through his work. Robert Henderson, his work, Testament of Presidy, is Chaucer's, Invitation of Chaucer's, Trollers and Presida. William Dunbar, he is known as the Rhymer of Scotland as well as Chaucer of Scotland. So, who was Chaucer of Scotland? Chaucer of Scotland was William Dunbar. His best work includes The Thistle and the Rose. It is a symbolic poem. Thistle and the Rose is a symbolic poem that suggests the union of England and Scotland in the marriage of James IV with Henry VII's daughter, Margaret Tudor. So this historic event is illustrated and in a symbolic way in Thistle and the Rose. His other works are The Two Married Women and The Widow, Dance of the Seven Deadly Sins. You find that the theme of seven deadly sins is utilized by many writers. The Golden Touch. Now, there is Gavin Douglas. He translated Virgil's Enid. Okay, Virgil's Enid was translated by Scottish Chaucerian. Which Scottish Chaucerian translated Virgil's Enid? That is Gavin Douglas into Scottish. Palace of Honor. It is model on Chaucer's House of Fame. Palace of Honor was model on Chaucer's House of Fame. It is his famous work. King Heart is another work that is a fine mixture of melancholy and humor. So with David Douglas, today we just finish our talking, what we discussed. And next day we'll discuss more about Chaucer or Chaucer's age or something else. Bye.